Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee, and today we're going to be talking about how to increase your efficiency in paragraph styles, especially while you're book designing um, in Adobe InDesign using the book function. Um, the main thing we're focusing on is creating styles with automation that will help you get your work done a lot more quickly and efficiently. So as we get started, um, take note that I am in the Essentials Classic workspace. Um, if you're following along, you'll have a much easier time if you are set up in the same workspace as me. Um, so a word about books before we get started. Um, using the book function in InDesign is something that we do quite frequently, especially with complex books or with books where the author's manuscript is already broken up into chapters in the Word documents. Um, this book that I will be working on today was one of those instances in which the author had already broken up the manuscript into multiple chapters. So it makes sense for me to go ahead and to flow those chapters individually into InDesign as well. I already have a book document created here. I have one chapter loaded into it. We can take a look at that here. This is the default style I have made for this document. Nothing super special. I'm sure all of you know how to get to this point. This uh, presentation is not necessarily about how to make a book pretty, but how to quickly format uh, the styles for an entire book. So I won't be going over how I created all of these styles, but this is just a mixture of various paragraph styles that have been applied to all of the paragraphs in this document. So if you've never created a book document before, Here's how you do that. Navigate to the top of the screen, go to File, New, and then click Book. There's nothing special here, no special settings. All it will do is generate a blank book document just like I already have. When you want to add or subtract InDesign files from your book document, you use the plus and minus buttons at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and load in the rest of the chapters for this book. I'll click the plus button to add another document and I'm going to shift click from chapter 2 to chapter 12 and then select open. InDesign is going to load all of these in in the order in which I selected them. And it's nice you can see the page numbers flow across here because I have um, automatic page numbering selected for each of these documents. So how do we start from scratch? Let's open up chapter two. Chapter two is a blank InDesign document. Let's place a Word manuscript into this document. I'm going to click on the text frame that I already have here, and then we're not going to navigate up to File, Place, and I'm going to place in the content for this book. And here is what I was talking about. So the, the author has already broken up each Word document into these various chapters. So we're going to select the chapter two manuscript and then load it in. Now I did not select any import options. I want everything to remain the same from Word because I don't want to lose anything that the author wants to retain. Now that I have the Chapter 2 Word document uh, loaded onto my cursor, I'm simply going to left click into this text frame and load it in. So this text looks exactly as it does in Word. I haven't changed anything about it. Before we start messing with things, we need to make sure we're familiar with the author's manuscript uh, because we need to retain anything she has written, such as italic and bold character styles, and I believe there are some in this chapter. Oh yes, there they are. So it's important that we retain these italic character styles. Uh, our author would be pretty upset with us if we lost all of her character styles. So how do we keep these from changing when we change the fonts? Because if I simply change this typeface to, let's say, Archer, I'm going to 
lose that when I clear the overrides. See how the italics are now gone. So let's undo what I just did. And then we're going to apply a character style to these um, italic words in order to keep them from getting lost. Now I could go through here and manually apply a character style of italic, which I've already created, to each of these. But let's speed up the process because I don't want to run through the entire book searching manually for them. Let's do this quickly with our find change. To open up the find change, click Control F. I'm in the grep tab. I am telling the find change to search through this document. And I'm going to tell it to look for a format of italic in the basic character formats tab. Next, we're going to tell it to replace that format with a character style of italic. When I click change all, it's going to run through the document and make those changes. Now visually it doesn't look like anything at all has changed, but if I clear the overrides, clear all the word manuscript overrides from this text, now the italic remains no matter what typeface we apply. Now that we've done this, we are going to catch all of these breaks in thought that the author has uh, indicated with a double carriage return. Most of the time an author will indicate these breaks in thought with uh, a row of three asterisks or maybe some dashes. This author has chosen to use a double carriage return. It is a little easier to catch these automatically if there is a, a physical entity in that space. But because she has chosen the double carriage return method, I'm going to run through and manually catch those before I clear all of the double carriage returns. These I will indicate with a paragraph style of body new paragraph. Now that I have applied to this style to this paragraph, I'm going to use my eyedropper tool to load that style onto my cursor. And then I'm going to quickly click through this chapter and left click in all of these new paragraphs. You can quickly apply paragraph styles this way by simply clicking. You don't have to highlight the whole paragraph. All right, now that that's done, let's apply our other paragraph styles. I'm going to pull this tab out here to access it more quickly. Okay, we're going to apply a chapter title style here, a centered quote style, a quote author, a body first, and then at the very end, there is a style for the journal prompt and questions. I've got to add some new pages at the end of this document. So I'll click over here to my Pages tab, add a new page, and I'm going to click on this little uh, plus icon which indicates there is overset text or text that is going off the side of the text frame. I'm going to click on that to load the overset text into my cursor and then shift click into this box to flow it across pages as far as it needs to go. Now take note, in a book document that contains multiple InDesign documents, you always want to make sure that you begin a document on a recto or a right-hand page. These are indicated by odd numbers. And then you want each chapter to end on an even-numbered page or a left-hand facing page. This way your page spreads don't get mix-matched because you always want your chapter titles to begin on a right-hand facing page. So even if I don't have enough content to fill another extra page, I need to add a blank page like this and then I will apply a page style of none to that to get rid of um, any extra formatting. Let's apply a body numbered style to the journal prompt questions 
and that should be it. I think we've caught everything now. The only style left to replace is the regular body, and we can quickly remove the Word manuscript formatting by clicking on this normal paragraph style. I know that this is a Word, uh, a word style because it has this funny little icon at the edge. This means that it was downloaded and brought in from another location. So I'm going to delete the style and then tell InDesign to replace it with the style of body. Now it looks like nothing has happened, but that is because the overrides or the uh, word formatting has not yet been overridden. I'm going to use Control A to select everything in the book, or this file I should say, and then right click and click clear all overrides. Now everything should look nice and pretty. Very good. Now that I've cleared these overrides, it appears that my extra pages at the end are no longer necessary. I don't need two blank pages at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those pages. All right, the next thing we are going to fix is orphans. As graphic designers, we should all hate orphans. Now that doesn't mean we should hate poor uh, motherless children, but we should not allow orphaned words or words on a single word on the end of a line to appear throughout the book. We need to fix these because visually it is not very pleasing to see just that little stub at the end of a paragraph. So we are going to let InDesign automatically fix those for us. Now I could come through here and shift return and break a couple extra words down to the next line to fix this, but I do not want to automatic uh, I do not want to manually do that throughout the entire book. So we are going to apply a style of no break to the entire body style, which will automatically fix this problem for us. So let's double click on our paragraph style for the body. And we are going to navigate over to the grep style tab. We're going to create a new grep style. Now, don't be scared by grep. Uh, it is a way to automate things using some background code. We actually already used grep when we used the find change earlier. That's not too scary, right? So let's use it again. I'm going to click new grep and I'm going to apply a style of no break, but let's go ahead and make that here. We can make it in this, uh, this uh, modal here. So let's click new character style, and we're going to call it no break, just so we know what it is. It could have any name technically. And the only thing we need to do here is to check this box for no break. That's it. Next, we are going to tell InDesign how many characters we want to remain on each line at the end. What is the minimum number that must stay? We indicate this with a very short line of code. It starts off with a period and then uh, an open curly bracket, the number 12, which is the minimum number of characters I want to remain. A lot of people use the number 10, but for this size book, I find that 12 works well. A closed curly bracket and then a dollar sign. I'm going to hit OK, and if we come back to this paragraph, now we can see that InDesign has automatically dropped a couple more words down to the end of this line in order to prevent orphans. Something else we want to prevent is these widowed lines at the top. Now, that doesn't mean that we hate women who have lost their husbands, but we do not want these lines at the top to come up here by themselves. These are called widows. To fix these, we are going to use keep options. So let's go ahead and open up the body style again. We are going to navigate to the keep options tab on the side, and we are going to tell InDesign that we always want at least two lines at the start 
and at least two lines at the end of every paragraph. When we do this, InDesign now forces two lines to exist at the top of the page. We no longer have that widow. Scroll through here and see how everything looks. We're getting closer. We don't have too much of an issue with this in this book, but I would like to also touch on justification settings. Let's say we had a couple of pages with short columns. I'm going to stretch this over here just for the sake of this display. I'm going to make these lines as short as I can so we get some funny spacing. If we look at this line, we can see that the space characters have stretched themselves out in order to force this line to go from the left edge all the way to the right edge. As compared to this line, the space characters are much smaller here because there are more characters on the line as compared to this space character. A, a way to manually fix this problem is to increase the tracking on this line, which will um, even out the color tone or the weight of this whole paragraph. If I increase the tracking, now this line looks a little better in tone. But, as per usual, I do not want to manually make this adjustment throughout the whole book, so let's fix it. Let's navigate once again to the body paragraph style, and we are going to go to the justification settings. Now, obviously, these settings only work if you are using some form of justified text, whether that's center justified or left or right justified. If you have uh, only left or right justifications, it will not work, but any sort of justified text will do. So the word spacing, letter spacing, and glyph scaling. These allow the words, letters, and glyphs to squeeze or stretch themselves just a little bit to even out the color tone of an entire line. These are the numbers that I usually like to use. We start off with a 99 in this slot, 101 in this slot, negative 2 here, 2% 2 here, then we go to 95, and 102. These particular numbers allow each word, letter, and glyph to squish and stretch themselves just a little bit. It's imperceptible to the eye, except in the color of the entire line or the weight of the entire line. It evens out the entire uh, weight of a paragraph. When we click OK and return, there's a much more even tone to this paragraph. Now there's no more funny big spaces in between words. I'm going to go ahead and let this text go back to where it, it belongs. And, yep, we're starting to look good. Next, let's talk about these double carriage returns. There's a couple different methods I could use to get rid of these double carriage returns. I could do a search for them in the find change. I could manually remove them, which I'm not going to do. Or I could use a script to automatically run through, catch double carriage returns, catch double spaces, catch unnecessary tabs, and any other unnecessary space characters that I don't need. If you've never used the script before, don't start worrying, it's all right. Scripts are no scarier than an action in Photoshop or an action in Illustrator. The way to install them is a little more archaic, but don't worry, there's no coding involved. We are going to install a script called Clean Space. This is the one that's going to clear up everything for us instantaneously. So where do we even start with installing a script? I am going to navigate over to one of my file folders. And this is really all a script is. 
I'm going to open up this text file. This text file could be opened in really any text editor. I'm just using the default notepad from Windows. You could use Microsoft Word or um, WordPad, anything you've got. Now to me, this code doesn't really mean anything, but luckily I didn't have to write it. This script was written by Peter Carrell. I use a lot of his scripts, I really enjoy them, and you can find a lot of them for free online. Uh, you can find this exact script on Peter's website. All you need to do is to either one, download this text file, or copy and paste all of these lines into a text document. Now a text document doesn't help us. What we need is a JavaScript document. All we need to do to make one of those is change the extension of this text document. And what I mean by that is we are going to save as, and instead of saving with a .txt extension, we are going to backspace and write JSX. This now indicates to my Windows machine that this is a Java script. When I click Save, I now have a JavaScript file ready to go. Now, where do we put it? In order to access that JavaScript file in InDesign, I need to put it into the InDesign folder. So let's take our JavaScript file. I'm going to cut it out of this folder. And now we are going to navigate over to the root part of our machine. I'm going to go to this PC. I'm going to navigate to my C drive, which is where all of my Adobe products are installed. I'm going to navigate to Program Files, Adobe, Adobe InDesign, Scripts, Scripts Panel, and Samples. Next, we are going to put it into the very last folder, which is the one called JavaScript. Here are all the other scripts that I have installed on my computer. All I need to do is to paste in this new one. Because this is a JavaScript file and does have the ability to change certain things, I have to give administrator access to continue to put it in here. I'm going to click OK. And now we can see this little script called Clean Space. It exists in this folder and now we can access it via InDesign. One thing to note, if you look through my list of scripts, you'll see that all of them have no space characters in the titles. This is because in the coding world, spaces tend to mess things up. You want to use either dashes or hyphens in between to indicate a space character. Make sure there is nothing typed in that could mess up your code. It doesn't really matter what the name of these files are either. You just want to have them named something so you know what they are. Okay, we no longer need this file folder, so I'm going to close it. So now that we have installed Clean Space, how do we use it in InDesign? We're going to open up the Scripts panel, which can be found under Window, Utilities, and Scripts. And when we scroll through our list, there it is. There's Clean Space under C. Some scripts have interfaces to use, other ones do not. Clean Space is one that has uh, no interface to use really other than the um, indicator at the beginning. To use it, I am not clicked in any of the text boxes. I am simply uh, in the file. And I'm going to double click to open the script and use it. Clean Space does have the option to change all caps to sentence case. Um, I don't need to use that feature for this, so I'm going to click OK and now you can see those space characters have gone. I usually run clean space two or three times because it only catches instances of double carriage returns and not triple or quadruple instances. So if you run it a couple times, it will catch all of those. All right, now we have no more double spaces. 
we don't have any extra tabs and no double carriage returns. The next thing we're going to look at is running headers and page numbers. I'm going to close the scripts panel, I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and put my paragraph and character styles over here on the dock. When we apply uh, running headers and page numbers, we want to do this over in our master, or now they're called parent, pages. I'm going to click on my A parent, which is applied to every page of this document. I already have a style for running header made, so I'm just going to quickly go through here and make these running headers. I'm going to apply the style of running header to it. And let's make one with a page number. When I'm duplicating these items, I'm using the Alt key and dragging out to create new ones. In this section, we are going to talk about text variables. A text variable that you probably already are using is page numbers. Like I said, we're trying to save work, right? So we're not going to manually go through and type 1, 2, 3, 4 on every page. We want InDesign to go through and automatically number the pages for us. To find the page numbers text variable, we are going to navigate up to Type, Insert Special Character Markers, and the current page number, which is indicated by this A. I want it to be left aligned on this side. And then I'm going to duplicate this running header on the other side which I will do by Alt dragging it over. On this side, I'm going to put the title of the book, which is Finding the Path of Me. Back on the first side, this is where we want the chapter number to be displayed. This is the chapter 2 file of this book. So if I type chapter 2, that's great and all. But now I have to go through the rest of the 12 chapters and change the master page and the running header for every single one. I don't want to do that. So we are going to make a text variable that can dynamically change this running header depending on what the name of the chapter is. How do we make text variables? When you want to make a new variable, we, go, we navigate up to Type, Text Variables, and then we're going to define a new one. For this variable, we are going to make a new one. They already have some preloaded ones. Uh, such as file names, image names, uh, output dates. But we need to make a new one which will indicate the name of the chapter. So let's go to New, and we're going to give it a name that we know. We're going to call it Running Header. We want it to be a Running Header Paragraph Style. This portion indicates what style the variable will appear in. This drop-down indicates where the content is coming from. The content that we want is coming from the chapter title paragraph style. The chapter title paragraph style is what I have applied to chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and so on and so forth. That is the content I'm trying to pull. So I will select the chapter title paragraph style. And we want InDesign to use the first instance of every chapter title on the page. This is a great option if you do have a file where uh, all of your chapters 
are in the same document because InDesign will now change that running header dynamically each time it encounters a new instance of that chapter number or chapter title. Let's click OK. And now we need to insert that new variable that we have made. So we will click Insert on this tab. And now our variable is indicated by the running header between two brackets. I'm going to save for good measure and then return to the main body of my file. And now we can see that InDesign has looked for this instance of the paragraph style called chapter title, pulled the content from it, and then put it into the running header paragraph style and this variable at the top. The next thing we're going to do is create a chapter title style for each of these um, chapter title pages. On a regular novel or most books, you'll notice that the first page of each chapter drops down almost halfway down the page. And you'll also notice that there is never a page number or running header generally on most books for these pages either. One method to do this is to create a secondary parent page, which removes the running headers from it. But we can speed up the process throughout a whole book if we create a style that automatically gets rid of them each time there is an instance of a chapter title style. What we're going to do is basically create a, create a cover for the running header. We're going to cover it up. To do this, we are going to navigate to the chapter title style, which is this one. I'm going to double click and open it up. Let me see if I can move this around where you guys can see what I'm doing. We are going to use paragraph rules to cover these up. You may have used rules in the past to create an underline for various styles. Now what we're going to do is use rule above and rule below to make a cover and a drop character for our chapter title. Oh, before I do that, I need to remember to drag this back to the top. Okay. Let's go back to ch chapter title. Go to paragraph rules. And we are going to utilize rule above to drop down all of this content. So you can see the rule above is indicated by this black line. We want it to be the width of the column, that's fine. And we want there to be an offset. If I start an offset, you'll see that rule above starts to fly up to the top of the page. This doesn't help us any unless we click this checkbox that says keep in frame. Now, the line is forced to stay in frame and the content drops downward. Let's drop that down about, yeah, that looks good right there. All right. Next, we are going to hide that line so we can't see it. So I'm going to give it a color of none. Now it's gone. Now we're going to use the rule below to cover up the running header. Again, we can see a black line. And we are going to use our offset to raise this rule up to the top of the page. Next, we're going to increase the weight of it till it covers the entire running header. And then we're going to give it an offset on either side, a negative offset to cover up the edges. I'm going to create the same offset on both sides. And now, here's where the magic happens. We are going to apply a, a color of paper. Voila, disappeared running headers. This document is looking pretty good. When I look back to my chapter one document, huh, 
I think my chapter two looks better than chapter one. I don't want to have to replicate everything I just did in every single chapter of this book. So fortunately, there's something called synchronize options that we can do to synchronize those styles throughout the entire book and all 12 of these documents. To synchronize the book, you first need a style source. I want my style source to be chapter two, which I have just edited. So I'm going to change the style source of this book by selecting this box. This moves and indicates the style source. Now that I have selected chapter two, I am going to select all of the documents and then click synchronize options from this menu. There's a lot of things you can synchronize, but the main things I want are the text variables because I need that running header variable. I need parent pages and I'm going to go ahead and do the character and paragraph styles as well. Okay, now when I click synchronize, InDesign is going to open up each of these documents and by using the style source is going to update everything to match. So it just updated all of the A parent pages, all of the paragraph and character styles, text variables, and everything that we have just spent the past 30 or so minutes doing. When I go back to chapter one, now it looks just like chapter two. And you can see that our running headers work in our magic. Now it says chapter one in this chapter. So let's do that one more time. I don't really like the way that this journal prompt H1 looks. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to go back to my style source chapter, which is chapter two. And let's go ahead and edit the style for the journal prompts. I'm going to open up the paragraph style for it here. And let's add some space before it. Let's add a quarter of an inch. Click OK. That looks much better. I'm going to save this document. And then let's synchronize it through the whole book again. I'm going to use this menu, drop down to synchronize options. And this time I just want to synchronize the paragraph styles. And I click synchronize. Let InDesign run through and automate that for me again. And now those journal prompt H1s will have updated throughout the whole book. Now when I want to open all of these files up and have a look at them, I can select all of them and then double click on one of them. It looks like it's only opening one, but it's going to open all 12. There we are. Excellent, looks good. One of the last things I usually do in book design is assign these none pages to these blank ones. I don't want a running header on a blank page, but I usually wait until the end to do that, just in case the pages happen to reflow. Now beforehand, I did go through and apply all of those styles to these other chapters like I did on chapter two. I wish I could automate all of that which you almost can. If you have a good editor and they apply word styles to the entire manuscript, then you can just delete and replace those word styles with InDesign styles. Unfortunately, we did not have that in this document. So when you're happy and you're ready to go with this book, when you think you're all done, you need to export it out to a PDF or whatever other format you need. I'm going to save all of my documents at once by using Control shift alt s And then let's export them. I'm going to select all of the documents. And then I'm going to save the book and export it to a PDF. Let's save it to my desktop. 
And let's just do a regular high quality print. If you're scrolling through your PDF and you find that you have a funny page flow or the spreads are not matched up correctly, remember to go back and check that every document is starting on an odd number and ending on an even number. This one should work out good though. Let's look at this in a two-page spread like we would a physical book. I'm going to go to view, page display, and do a two-page scrolling view with the cover page showing. And there we go. So we were able to automate the styles throughout about 100 pages of book very quickly and without too much work. Now there's a couple few things I changed here, like this page needs to have the running headers removed. But overall, we've gotten pretty far in, say, 40 or so minutes. All right, guys, I think we're going to call that good. Um, thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I hope you got some questions for us because we're about to go into the question and answer portion. Um, thank you very much, and let's have at it. Let's hear your questions.